Well, according to you and another number of analysts, bin Laden has been dead for quite some time already. If that were true, why would the U.S. wait till now to announce his death? Well, first, let me uh, correct you. I'm not in uh, New York. I'm actually in Japan. Oh, but um, but. Uh, it's not my contention that, that Osama bin Laden def, def, definitively has been dead for some time, but that he has been, his death has been announced a number of times at any rate. And, uh, and I don't see why we should take this, uh, this pronouncement any more seriously than any of the previous pronouncements, especially considering the complete and utter lack of evidence that has so far been produced to show that Osama bin Laden or anyone resembling that description was actually killed yesterday. But I think it's important to understand the announcement that occurred yesterday, not through the lens of the announcement of the death of some terrorist mastermind so much as the uh, retirement party for a known CIA asset along the lines of uh, Lee Harvey Oswald back in November 1963. And I think uh, Lee Harvey Oswald is probably the best analog for Osama bin Laden as someone who did not have the means, motive or opportunity to do what he allegedly did, not only killing President Kennedy, but also waltzing in and out of the Soviet Union at the height of the Cold War after having been working at the uh, top secret Atsugi Air Force Base uh, with no questions asked using money that he didn't have at the time. In the same way, we see Osama bin Laden being the, the rogue element of the bin Laden family of uh, construction fortune, who, of course, has deep ties to the oligarchy of Texas and, of course, the Bush family. So uh, we see uh, Osama bin Laden, of course, having deep ties to the American intelligence establishment. So I see this more as a ploy of uh, the CIA getting rid of one of their old assets, whether he actually did die yesterday or he's been dead for years or whatever the case may be. This is simply uh, discarding a war on terror boogeyman who's no longer scaring the populace. OK, so you have your point of view about what went on today and uh, certainly you're entitled to that. But what do you think this will do about the uh, presidential elections coming up? 2012 is around the corner. Do you think that Obama can claim this as a victory leading into a reelection campaign? Uh, there's certainly no doubt that this is going to give a, a market boost to, to Obama as people rally around the flag as they usually do in circumstances like this. So I think this is going to have a, a positive effect in, in that way. And also it, uh, it once again uh, inoculates and endures the public, inures the public, I should say, to uh, the idea of extrajudicial assassinations just days after uh, NATO attempted to assassinate uh, Gaddafi and ended up killing his son and grandchildren. Uh, once again, we see another type of extrajudicial assassination going on, which of course is an international war crime, but uh, in this case it's uh, it's okay because it's the boogeyman that everyone loves to hate, so um, it once again makes it okay in the eyes of the public. So with a person like bin Laden, one way or another, out of the picture at this point, what do you think is the future of terror? Well, I think at this point, uh, it, it's for anyone who has been paying attention over the last 10 years, it's been quite obvious, but I, I can't see how the, uh, the perpetrators of the war of terror can any longer pretend that terrorism itself is actually some sort of enemy combatant with, uh, that consists of some sort of army led by some sort of shadowy mastermind in a cave in the hills of Afghanistan, so much as it is simply a word that means anything that is opposed to uh, U.S. oligarchical interests. But it's more than just that. I mean, there's terrorists striking Russia right now. There's Doku Umarov doing his uh, his uh, occasional action here. There's terrorism going on in the Middle East. I mean, it's not something that's simply striking the United States or something that's purely instigated by the, the West. No one denies that there are terrorists and there are real terrorist events, but I think the spectacular types of terror events that we've seen, for example, on 9-11 and on 7-7 and uh, certain other uh, terror attacks have been allowed and or puppeteered and or perpetrated by uh, Western intelligence agencies. And I think absolutely Osama bin Laden and the Al-Qaeda narrative has been an important part of that. And when you go back to the 1980s with Afghanistan and the, the roots of Al-Qaeda, you see that o Osama bin Laden was directly supplied by the U.S. who were selling his men arms at a reduced rates. In the 1990s, you have uh, FBI whistleblower Sibel Edmonds testifying that uh, the information that she had at the FBI indicated that bin Laden was working hand in glove with the U.S. intelligence establishment throughout the 19, 1990s. Uh, and uh, you have well, Michael Springman testifying that when he worked at the Jetta consulate in the 1980s, he was giving uh, terrorists to known uh, visas to known terrorists in order to bring them into the U.S. for training at U.S. Uh, military bases. So at every possible opportunity, you see how these uh, these types of organizations are helped along at key junctures by people uh, who have ties to the uh, Western intelligence establishment. All right, we're going to have to leave it there. Editor of the Corbett Report, James Corbett.